Hey everyone, welcome to Insight Today. I am Rachel Tucker and this is my dad. Yes, and I'm James Gall and with God Encounters Ministries where God Encounters are for everyone and God Encounters are especially for each one of you. And we are celebrating right now it's sort of like our one year anniversary where we have been doing this insight program together and we are just so pleased with the response of people from around the world so i just want to say thank you to each and every one of you whether you're as rachel says regular insiders or that maybe you're new for the first time yeah, thank you guys so much for joining in on with this. This is something that we kind of like started during quarantine last year when at least we were in quarantine here in Nashville. And it has been so cool to see the fruit that has come out of this and continuing to press in and do it for a year now. So awesome. Thank you guys for joining us along the journey. Um, if you are new, we have a theme verse, and it is Daniel 12, 3, which says, Those who have insight will shine brightly like the expanse of heaven and will lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. And ever. And yes. Ever. And so we have a little, oh, little, uh, I don't know what the word is, a token or a regular little routine we do. We have coffee cups that we do. Oh, where's yours from, Rachel? Or it looks it's like from, it's from Colombia. Colombia. Colombia, Colombia. The country. Columbia, Columbia. South America. Yes. Yeah. Really? That's cool. Yeah. Guess where mine's from? Uh, I feel like yours is from um, Scotland or Holy That's Island. True. That's right. This is from England, which is from Lindisfarne Island, Holy Island, and. Uh, yeah, and so this is a part of a, uh, yeah, a part of the, just the grand experiment of people in the faith, just of uh, the holy island. I just absolutely love it. And this is a Celtic is what it is. This is an art piece of a coffee cup from that area of Northeast England called Holy Island. So cheers. Well, cheers. And if you are joining us, type in the comments what your mug is, because I think some of you guys have caught on that we just will always have a mug and we would love to hear what you are drinking today too. Also, if you um, have just hopped on or if you've been watching from the beginning, please type in the comments where you're from. We love hearing where you guys are from all over the world. And that's something that's really cool. It's like, Dad, you have an England mug. I have a Columbia mug. Like, they're from our travels that we've done. Yeah. And um, we love just being able to connect where, if you guys are local or if you're somewhere abroad, we just love getting to hear that. So um, welcome. And today we are going to have an episode on feeling and discerning, which I'm really yeah. excited to kind of dive into that topic. But um, Dad, is there anything you want to say before we do? Well, we continue to build is what we're doing. And last week we did on what do I do with these burdens? And it's again is based out of this new book, The Feeler, on discovering how sensitivity or you could interject perhaps the word emotions, mm -hmm. but how sensitivity helps you discern and act on God's voice. But today I am kind of putting two different then books together or thoughts the discerner then hearing and confirming and acting on prophetic revelation so i'm putting these two together but last week it was on what do i do with these burdens and the theme verse was galatians chapter 6 verse 2 on bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of christ and so today Again, what is our theme that we are using today, Rachel? Yeah, feeling and discerning is where we're headed. Let's go on in. Okay, let's go on in. Oh my goodness. I absolutely, do I say I love this subject? 
but let me say I have actually given a lot of thought, prayer, and devotion of my life into this subject matter. So I'm going to read, you know, from Acts chapter 16, which I have taught from for years, and then we will pray. And um, I'm going to actually read this from, it's from obviously the Bible, but I have it printed out, you know, for me to read. Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 18, and this is the Apostle Paul on his journey when the Lord opens the heart of a woman named Lydia, and she responds to the gospel. Did you hear that? whose heart was opened to the gospel, a woman named Lydia. Why was that important? She was the first convert into an entire continent. A woman was a gatekeeper to an entire continent of Europe. It's important to grasp that, Rachel. A woman was the first to respond to the gospel, and she was a businesswoman and became a woman of prayer. She was a woman of substance, a marketplace woman, and she worked with purple fabrics. Okay, now, so her heart was opened first to the gospel of the kingdom in Europe. And Paul follows up then to host meetings, and Lydia became the gatekeeper to the continent of Europe. God bless this woman. Now, Acts 16, 16, now we build on that background. Once when we were going to the place of prayer. Mm, they had places of prayer, and they also had specific times of prayer. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money by her owners by fortune-telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for, listen to this, she kept this up for many days. Now that sounds, take away the first part, because they did not know what spirit she was operating under. They didn't know. They didn't have this discernment. This is now written after the fact. There was a woman who was following, and it sounds like she is saying the absolute correct things. These are men of the Most High God who are proclaiming to you the way to be saved, or another translation, the way of salvation. She kept this up for many days, not just one time. She kept saying this over and over and over and over and over and over for one day, two days, three days. It says for many days. That is really important to get this. Finally, finally, Paul became so annoyed. Another translation says irritated in spirit. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit. He didn't just say to the woman. Finally, Paul became so irritated. Another translation says so frustrated. Finally, after many days, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and he said to what? The spirit because he discerned beyond the natural. And he said to the Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. Ooh, I love this. 
I have seriously taught this around the world, that I've often taught it about the gift of discerning of spirits, which is appropriate to do. So again, Father, thank you for this time. I'm asking for grace to communicate, and I'm asking that this will be used to help us, again, in feeling and discerning to know the difference and as well how it all works together eventually to serve the kingdom of God. Now, I'm going to read from the discerner book, which again is a great compliment to the feeler. If you don't know the discerner book, I introduced a chapter on each of our senses, seeing, hearing, feeling, and then smelling, tasting. I put those together, and then I did one on knowing. So then I was able to follow up with the whole book on the feeler because I introduced it here in the discerner. Now, but we're doing a lot on burden bearing right now that there's a whole chapter in here. So I'm going to read to you in here the little bit I wrote on the discerner on feeling from the heart flows the issues of life. Having just read to you Acts 16, 16 to 18. Now, this is a good example of a disciple whose emotions were being guided by God. Although we may never run into a similar situation, we can learn from it, asking the Holy Spirit to guide us and help us discern between good and evil as we exercise our spiritual senses. Now, I'm going to back up. As we walk by faith, I find that I can usually sense the difference between good and evil. And whatever I am uncertain about, which is presenting itself, all I need to do is review the ABCs of God, which is presenting itself. All I need to do is review the ABCs of God's ways to see if what I am facing lines up with them. What is the motivating spirit behind this thing I, that I am uncertain about? See, what is the motivating spirit behind? That's the question you've got to ask. Does my spirit bear witness with the Holy Spirit? Huh. Does it reflect the nature of God? Do I see love in it? Are the gifts of the Spirit in operation? Is this situation bearing good fruit? If I come up with too many unclear answers or flat-out negatives, I can thank my spiritual sense of touch for showing me that this thing is a fraud or even a threat. You know, it is even okay if I feel annoyed in your spirit when the enemy is badgering you. You see, this is the story of Paul with the slave girl who had a demonic spirit of divination. When we dis even though her words were true, these are men of the most, whole God, most high God who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. Her motivation came from, though, an unclean spirit, and it was time for somebody to deal with it. Now, here's what happens. See, somebody's words can sound right, but the motivating spirit behind right words can be wrong, and that is a religious spirit. Remember, right words with a wrong motivation or a wrong spirit, that's, it's off. Something's off. And see, that's why Paul couldn't act immediately. It took him, it says, an after many days. So he could not act immediately because why? 
you're going to know it by its fruit. And, it t- and fruit takes time to be born. And so the way I grasp this, because I've had experience with this spirit myself, it takes time to be able to judge this thing. And you'll know it by its fruit. And it was like a wet blanket getting released. What do I mean by that? It was just like the words were right, but it was producing like a low ceiling. It was like, oh, the atmosphere that was being released was the very opposite of the words because of the heart that was behind it was a religious spirit. In fact, the word for divination is python. So it's what sucks the breath out of you. It's what a python curls up and it sucks the breath out of a room, out of a region, out of a person. It sucks the breath out. That's the Holy Spirit. It's to coil and just suck the life out. So Paul could not respond immediately because there was something that had to be discerned. The outer words sounded correct. Now, there's a little bit of a word twist that's actually here, and I don't know, you know, the Aramaic, the Greek language that was being used. But in the English, there's a twist that's here, a twist. And that's what a python does. It's a twisty serpent. That's what a Leviathan does. A Leviathan twist communication. These are men of the Most High God who are proclaiming to you a way not the way. So what was this woman saying? A way or the way? I don't technically know for sure, but if it was saying a way, that's not a truth. If it was saying the way, the truth, then that was accurate. That it could have been that it was actually proclaiming a truth with an error wrapped around it. Because Jesus is not a a way, a truth, and a life. He is the only way, the only truth, and he is the only way, the truth, and the life. So perhaps There was also something that was very subtle that had to be discerned through that was also a doctrinal twist. Away! He's, they're proclaiming to you, away! Away! Sounds right. It's wrong. And a lot of people today don't even discern that difference. Because Jesus isn't a way, he's the way. And that alone will de- will absolutely offend a lot of people. Whether that was what was also happening, I cannot text proof that. It could have been. But what we do know is that words sounded right, but the fruit that was being born, everywhere else Paul the Apostle was going, it was effective. But there was a hired person by others that was being paid a lot of money, professional occult witchcraft, planted in their midst to try to change the external spiritual atmosphere. And I have faced a lot of this in my ministerial ministry. I'm going to sit for a moment and I'm going to tell you a Holy Ghost story and then we'll see what happens, okay? Some time ago, when I was ministering with my friend Mahesh Shabda in the nation of Haiti, 
we did five days of open air crusades. This was in the rough, out in the fields. And I had to hire people to, with machetes to cut down, you know, the plantations out in the rough. And all we had was a flatbed truck. We didn't have a, a giant crusade stadium. We had open air and we had a flatbed truck. And I had intercessors that I brought with me from around the world and the local Haitian intercessors underneath the truck. And the Hesh was preaching and I was his assistant and I was his intercessor, lead intercessor. And I was on the platform. And there was a lot of great things that was going on and a lot of activity, God activity was going on. And that Sunday afternoon on nationwide radio, the witches got on the radio and they said, we are going to gather at our normal place this afternoon at like two o'clock and we are gathering to place curses on the crusade tonight because our kingdom is under siege. Did you hear me? So that night, six o'clock in the evening or so, we're having our last night of the meeting, okay? So Mahesh had preached on salvation. He preached on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is now the fifth night. And he's uh, going to uh, preach on uh, curses and breaking curses. I'm on the flatbed truck. And, and, like, and there's like 10,000 people in the audience out in the field. You, this is worth taking a little extra time to hear this testimony, folks. You're going to love it because it relates to what I just shared out of Acts 16 in a modern day setting, okay? At a distance, the spiritual atmosphere shifts in the negative. I can feel it. Did you hear me? I could feel it. And at a distance, I could see these people linked in arms in a chain weaving like a snake. And over here to the side of the, of the flatbed truck, there is a tree. It's called a sorcerer's tree is what it's called. And there were people that gathered and they weren't good people. And they are now placing curses on the meeting. And out in the field, I could see them coming. And they are in a chain. And they are weaving through the crowd like a snake to break up the crowd. Because they had just released a word. We've got to do something because our kingdom is under siege. So guess what I did? I stomped on that flatbed truck and that I just did that and the whole my whole computer just went like this. And when I did that, that was my word to my intercessors underneath the flatbed truck that said more prayer. And so they they went in a roar into more prayer. And over here to the side where there was the sorcerer the, the tree there was a whirlwind that happened, a little white tornado. I wasn't quite sure what was going on, okay? And I'm up there praying in tongues, and Mahesh is up there preaching away, and there was a little white tornado that showed. Listen, the atmosphere, it was like an electrical charge. It was conflict, spiritual warfare. I could feel it. And my discerner was going, we're on the winning side. Mahesh just kept on preaching, and my team just kept on praying, and we were in an Act 16 moment. And guess what? I was annoyed in the spirit. But I was annoyed to do what? Fight. I was annoyed to fight. We are winners. And I'm enforcing the victory of Calvary. And I stomped on that flatbed truck. And my intercessors just started to roar in the spirit. And there started to be a little white whirlwind. It was white, not dark. The sun, the sun started setting. But this white 
whirlwind, but it was a Holy Ghost torn little whirlwind. It was a white one, and it scared the witches that were over here placing curses, and they freaked out, and they ran away. And then this white tornado, like when these chain gang were coming in, and they were like coming like a snake to disturb the crowd, this white tornado, zippity doodah, oh, go. Okay, <laughs> that was kind of funny. What the, this white tornado, I wish I had had a video camera, but we didn't have, you know, cell phones of all that stuff back then. And it went, a Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost whirlwind, like Elijah, a whirlwind caught him up. A Holy Ghost, white little tornado, Holy Ghost whirlwind, went after that snake crowd and chased them out of the crowd and they fled and then a mantle fell of miracles and people got saved and a woman who was 77 years old blind from birth brought by her granddaughter her eyes got opened up and the next thing i know she is up on the platform saying, Benny swallowed the nail. And I'm going, Benny swallowed what? And that was Creole, their native language. And she's saying, Benny swallowed the nail, which meant praise the Lord because she now knew Jesus had gotten baptized in the Holy Spirit and she was blind from birth, but her granddaughter had brought her, and now she was totally healed. And that's my story of an act 16, when the feeler got annoyed and rose with a fighter to discern. And when God arose and his enemies were scattered. There you go. That's amazing. I'm How do you like that one? I'm just only sad that I wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if I was alive yet. You were alive. Just probably learning letters or something. Yeah, right. Come on. I anyway, love it. When you're talking that amazing? about, isn't that amazing? About, oh, so wait, what, awesome. what? When you're talking no. about acts um, and like, T talking about like okay it sounds like the truth but there's actually like a mocking spirit yes. attached to it where i feel like you can say um you can say a truth like oh you are beautiful and you might be saying that someone's beautiful but if you say oh you're beautiful oh, you're you're beautiful you well you know you're beautiful you're beautiful you're beautiful you're beautiful and then it starts to get, there's this jealousy, there's this mocking spirit in it, and it starts twisting the truth. And so anyways, when you were saying that, I was like, that's like a really practical application of that, where Very good. you kind of see like the fruit of what someone is saying. And there's a hook behind that. Yeah, the motive that underneath it. Allure you. See, seduction, the yeah. spirit of seduction, tries to lure a person from a place of stability into a place of instability. Yeah. And that's, that's how it works. Now, the statement, you're beautiful, is true. But when it's done, because then what the issue is, it's what is the motivating spirit behind it? Mm -hmm. Because if it is seducing, yeah. You know you're really beautiful, don't you? Yeah, you're, you're, it's like, I don't know, this is getting weird. That's, that's, and, sli that's slimy. The repetition too, when you start hearing something over and over and over, like she was operating in, in Act yeah. 16, like, you're like, okay, okay. And, and what's the, 
what's the root of this? Like, why do you keep saying this? And why is it repetitious? Mm -hmm. Why do you, why do you keep following? And yeah. you know, okay, this is going to be hard and we're not going to, I'm not going to major on this. I have to deal with that kind of stuff. And there's another issue that I had to learn from ministry in Haiti, and it's called a trailing spirit, where things follow you. Oh, and you've got to learn to shut doors on things. Yeah. So, folks, let's learn to shut doors and open right doors. And Paul the Apostle had to learn because he had just opened, the Lord had opened, and he had opened a door. Yeah. to Europe. So then what happened? A counterattack came to try to defile the open door to the continent of Europe. Mm -hmm. And so always remember, please remember, the enemy comes where he is threatened. Attacks are not always a sign that you are doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Attacks at times are signs you are doing something right. Absolutely. And to scare you away from your calling, like so much. I mean, I, I remember when I was a, a teenager, I, I had battled with um, having night terrors probably my whole life. Just awful dreams, sometimes repetitious ones. It's almost comical because it's like, I'm the daughter of a dreamer and yet I'm having really bad dreams. And it sometimes it takes someone else outside the family, but um, our friend, Jamie Galloway, he actually like called it out and was like, it's because the enemy is afraid of the calling on your life in the dreaming capacity. And the moment he did that, I like my spirit was able to switch and like walk in authority in my dreams instead of being terrified of the night terrors. And where you get attacked, it is sometimes, not always, it is a sign, flip it. Yeah. It's a sign of your calling. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, do we want to do a few questions real quick? Yay. Let's try. Okay. Larry wrote, what is the greatest challenge as a feeler? How can you know it's the Lord speaking as you feel? Okay. So in the feeler book, there is a chapter on, you know, responding to your feelings. Could you say it one more time for me? Yeah. Larry, what is the greatest challenge as a feeler? What's the greatest challenge? One of the greatest challenges is not getting overwhelmed. Not getting overwhelmed. And so how do you stay in not getting overwhelmed mm -hmm. then? And we've gone over this before. For me, it's worship. Mm -hmm. Worship. You know, Sunday, I could have stayed at home yesterday, you know, well, a few days ago, I could have stayed at home. And we have choices to make, don't we? We all have choices. But I tell you what, worship is so important. And it's so valuable. And there is something that also happens when you are with others. Mm -hmm. that doesn't happen when you are alone. So I want to say to Larry, Actually, I think that this is a word of knowledge I'm going to give. Do not forsake the assembly of the saints, which is the custom of some. This is a big key on dealing with being able to keep your emotions from being overwhelmed and them being uh, sanctified, set apart in an ongoing basis is walking in community with others and being in some form, and I'm not going to define the ecclesia right now because there's many valid biblical forms of the ecclesia, the church. So do not, so I'm going to say it positively, walk in community, walk in worship, and walk in the word. 
And if we will do the simple ABCs, as I read from the discerner book here, if we walk in the ABCs, it sure, I see a compass right now, a vision of a compass. We will have our true north in place. But when we put the compass aside, then it will just twirl around and we can get lost in our emotional dimension. Keep your compass in place, which would be, I feel I just got to go back to this for some reason with, with you, Larry, or whosoever. Do not forsake the assembling of the of the saints which is the custom of some so that is essential it's extremely important get together walk in community and worship 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 and maintain your devotional life in the word it's called the washing and renewing of the word of god I love it. Well, let's just do one more um, question. Okay. I kind of love this one because it's very relatable in Good. the day and age that we live in. But Ty wrote, does anyone pick up people's feelings, despair, depressions, hopelessness, etc., from reading posts in Facebook? Or is it just me? Oh, whoa. So Rachel, we did an insight program. And what was this person's name? Ty. Ty. Wow. Hi, Ty. I like you. You're wonderful. And I don't mean that in a weird way. Okay. Um, <laughs> having just said what we did earlier, you know, I really feel the Lord just, wow. The Lord really just wants you to know that he just not only loves you, he really likes you. You know, the Lord, your ways really please the Lord. You know, and where is it, the book of Philippians or Colossians that we are, the Philippians, that we are to do that which is pleasing to the Lord. And my knower and feeler just says, that's the pursuit of your heart and your life. That your pursuit is to do that which is pleasing to the Lord. And even your question shows that. So Rachel and I did a session on Insight that you could go back and look at and on Facebook and it's on YouTube and we post them all on our ministry website and it'll be under Jim Media. We did one on boundaries in a social media age. And so, hey, Ty, you're exactly right. And that's why we did that session on boundaries in a social media age, because guess what? It affects me. And if it affects me, it probably affects some others also. And there's times I have to do what I call a social media detox because there are pollutants that happen. And sometimes we need to just, hey, I've got a scripture for you. Psalm 24. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord, but he who has clean hands and a pure heart? And I want to commend that to you because, Ty, that is what your desire is. And you're right. We've got to be careful what we take in. And so, therefore, we need to get washed Continually, one more little insight. In Middle Eastern customs, they would take their shoes off at the door. Do you want to know one of the reasons why? And they sometimes would even have a basin at the door where they would wash their feet. Do you want to know why? It's because they would, what you would call, pick up the dust of the world by just walking in regular life. And they didn't want to carry the dirt or the dust of the world into the home. That's just practical. 
Well, that's the way that we're actually supposed to walk in the kingdom of God. We do pick up the dust of life, and some of the biggest dust of life we can pick up today can be through social media. So you're right, Ty. We need to be careful, and we need to dust ourselves off and get washed and cleansed in the blood of Jesus and through the water of the word. Really good insight. God bless you. I know. I love that question. Um, well, we are out of our time for no. today, but we want to thank you guys so much for joining us. And once again, we have the feeler is out right now. You can actually get a hardback copy yep. and a signed copy um, on our website at um, jamesgall.com. And so we want to make sure you guys can avail yourself to that. You'll also get 12 free video devotionals if you uh, purchase it through our website. And then there's also the discerner, which dad, you kind of highlighted and uh, read some from today. So both of those are available at jamesgall.com or godencounters.com. But we want to thank you guys for joining us today. And if you would like to partner with this ministry, we would love to have you. We would love to have you financially so into this ministry as well as pray with us. So a few ways you can do that is you can join the email list. Um, and then you can also, for giving, there is a link on the description of this video on the Facebook video. If you would like to click and donate that way, you can give through the ministry website. There's text to give if you live in the U.S. and then a number you can call if you'd like to do it that way. But we want to thank you guys so much. And crazy it's been a year. It's yep. been a year since we have done Insight. So thank you. Thanks for joining on with us. It is so fun. Amen. So thank you so much. And we'll look forward to uh, being with you again next week. God bless you.